Um, who were the subjects in this uh, experimental trial? Children aged younger than two. Incredible. So some parents have taken their children along to be injected with this experimental genetic preparation. You might have your views on that. Respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, naive children. In other words, children had not been exposed to RSV aged two through to five years. They were the subjects in this experiment. Uh, the halt of this uh, mRNA respiratory syncytial virus vaccine, uh, severe respiratory disease safety signal. So severe respiratory disease was noted in the people that were the children that were vaccinated. And in the language of the trial, they say safety signal led to study pause. It's been paused since, what was it, June or July? I can't remember now. Anyway, it's been paused for these last good few months. Now, what they say, potential safety signal for RSV, severe, severe lower respiratory tract illness. So that's what that one, severe lower respiratory tract illness, was identified. Right, so what was the problem? Well, we were seeing, they were seeing more cases of RSV and more cases of severe lower respiratory tract infection. Uh, lower respiratory tract infection can develop into pneumonia. Or pneumonia is a, a low, one of the lower respiratory tract infections. Um, this is a remarkably serious life-threatening complication just from the uh, apparent increased proclivity to getting the severe respiratory infections that it was supposed to be uh, preventing. An imbalance in cases of RSV and severe lower respiratory tract infection was obser observed, with more cases present among vaccine group compared to the control group counterparts. In other words, they were seeing more RSV infection, more severe lower respiratory tract infection in the children that were vaccinated compared to the children that were in the placebo group. Uh, even though the numbers are relatively small, five cases in the mRNA group uh, who were given 15 micrograms of this genetic preparation compared to one case in, in the uh, part B placebo group. So that's uh, times five, isn't it? Is that right? Infection five times more common in the group that were vaccinated, if that's the term you want to use, compared to those in the placebo group. Pretty, uh, pretty concerning safety signal, I'm sure you will agree. Of these six cases, five required hospitalisation, including one infant who required mechanical ventilation. Not good. We don't like mechanically ventilating anyone, children perhaps most of all. This raised concern for vaccine-associated enhanced respiratory disease. This seems to be the key thing here. Are we looking at vaccine-associated enhanced respiratory disease? We don't want any respiratory disease, and we certainly don't want vaccine-associated enhanced respiratory disease. Not good. The protocol study pause criteria for any... Uh, any uh, severe lower respiratory tract infection with positive polymerase chain reaction for PCR. In other words, they tested positive for RSV uh, in greater than or two participants was met. In other words, it was an automatic uh, shutdown of the trial, which, of course, is good that these um, automatic uh, pause buttons are there. Uh, so two or more would have done. They actually had five quite a lot now the study itself i'm not going to go into this in too much detail but the planned uh, three parts um part a cohorts one and two were given given 30 micrograms of the mrna 1345 and 30 micrograms of the mrna 1365 and the placebo so they either got this now they got 30 micrograms of that or they got 30 micrograms of this one or they got the placebo which, of course, is good clinical trial uh, technique. Approximately 90 participants, 8 months to 24 years of age. So the youngest looked like it was 8 months. The oldest was uh, 24 months in this study. And they were randomised on a 1 to 1 to 1. 
So one group got that, one group got that, one group got that. Given that there was 90, there must have been presumably 30 in each group. Now, they had planned a part B to give them two doses um, with approximately 120 participants. Uh, and that also, uh, so that was another thing that had been planned. Now, it doesn't actually say how much they got into giving people two doses or children two doses. But thankfully, the trial was stopped before they could start giving them three doses. Um, it's just three extra doses of uh, genetic vaccine they were planning for these children. Um, three doses of uh, 30 micrograms of mRNA-1345. They planned on 100 participants, eight months to uh, less than 12 months of age, uh, who had not previously received nirzinumab. Now, this is a monoclonal antibody to RSV. It, I, I don't really understand why they, this was in. What did I, it just seems to overcomplicate things to me. Um, I would have thought you want to study one variable at a time rather than two variables, but there you go, that's what they put in. Right, now this meeting, this meeting of the uh, Vaccine and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee part of the FDA, uh, they're looking at this vaccine-associated enhanced respiratory disease and they're currently considering... Uh, criteria for uh, recommencement. Um, recommencement. I've no idea if I spelled that right or not, but the word I meant to say is recommencement. Now, um, I, I would have found it difficult to see how this could be recommenced with such a strong safety signal. So, two issues. Two issues. One is the general issue of the systemic distribution of the lipid nanoparticles, which really hasn't been solved in the idea that antigens could be produced anywhere, generating uh, the immune system or stimulating the immune system to kill uh, transfected cells anywhere in the body. I haven't seen a satisfactory answer to that. In fact, I don't think I've seen any answer to that. That's uh, uh, an ongoing concern I have. And the fact that we had this uh, vaccine associated or apparent vaccine associated uh, increased resistance to disease. We could postulate on mechanisms of how that occurred. Maybe it was more immunoglobulin type 4s. <laughs> maybe it was more immunoglobulin type 4s. Or maybe it was stimulating the uh, suppressor cells, uh, as you would get with a desensitising vaccine, for example. Uh, either way, it looks like the, uh, it's not going to be a positive uh, prophylactic for RSV. Now, of course... Um, RSV is currently um, authorised in several parts of the world for treating for older people uh, to give over 65s, I think it is, uh, as a vaccine to prevent respiratory syncytial virus. Now, I've talked to, I've, I've worked with older people with chest infections for well, since I was 18 on and off, really. Uh, never seen a, an older person admitted with respiratory syncytial virus pneumonia. Um, may have missed it, of course. You know, we don't always have accurate diagnoses. But the doctors I've talked to uh, seem to think that RSV infection in the elderly is not a problem. So um, you can't say it's no problem, but it's it's not a big problem. We, we get people in with a respiratory sepsis all the time. Um, sometimes it's viral, but most, most commonly the sepsis is uh, bacterial. Um, but I don't know that I've ever treated a, an older person with RSV sepsis. And uh, the doctors I've talked to uh, haven't either. So quite why we're giving um, an RSV vaccine to older people for a disease that doesn't appear to be a problem uh, is a bit of a tricky question. I don't really know the answer to that one. At least the doctors I've talked to don't think it's a problem. Of course, the British government is in bed with Moderna on a 10-year deal uh, to make tens of millions, 250 million doses of uh, vaccine a year, potentially. Uh, new plant about to go live in Australia, new plants in Canada. Um, I guess if this doesn't work, if these, if these mRNA uh, vaccines turn out to be a flop, as this one just has been, um, there could be, who knows, there could be financial implications from that. <laughs>